Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Anne's and St. Peter's Worship. My name's Natalie, and we have um, loads of people from the church community helping us to worship. We've got Elaine, who's going to um, unpack our reading that Graham's going to read out for us. Um, Joshua's going to help us um, with our prayers, and I think Jenny's going to help him too. Um, Wendy's here as well, and Lou's going to lead us in our sun worship. So thank you all so much for coming and joining us. Yes, <laughs> um, it's lovely to have you join us and worship with us. It's a real privilege um, to gather as we do um, using these technologies. Um, Elaine, you had something that you were waving at me just a minute before we went live. Can you just um, wave that to me again? There we go. That's a happy face. Okay, uh, and, a sad face. Face. and a sad face. I, I, yeah. I must confess, I couldn't find a plate, so I have a bowl. Oh, Joshua, that's great. Hold that a bit closer. Oh, yay! Well done. Brilliant, Josh. That's brilliant, Josh. Well done. And um, morning at two. Oh. <laughs> Elaine and good morning to well, join us. Hello, welcome. Um, so I couldn't, Elaine, I couldn't find a crown, so I had to make myself a tiara out of Christmas decorations. Is that okay? That's fine. I haven't got one at all. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you, do you still got your inflatable you like crown? Now? I, I, I do have it. I don't find it, shall I? Oh, brilliant! Yeah, that sounds great. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, the Williams family. Good morning, Helen. Lovely to have you with us. And Pat, thank you for joining us. I love the way everybody's saying good morning to all. Oh, look, Wendy's found her crown. That's fantastic. Wow, brilliant. Thank you. Morning, Naomi. Morning, Stephen and Dawn. Lovely to have you with us. So okay. just a reminder, um, Wendy's got the most regal of crowns. I've had to make yeah. doing them with a tiara. And um, if you've got them, um, paper plates would be good. So if you haven't, you've got a few minutes um, to find those. Will the sequin top hat do? Oh, a sequin top hat looks fantastic. That's amazing. And as it, I've just noticed, it's now 10 o'clock. So on behalf of St. Anne's and St. Peter's, may I welcome you to our morning's worship. It's lovely to have you with us. My name's Natalie, and I'd like to introduce some of the other faces on the screen um, to you. There's Lou, who's going to lead our sung worship. Um, Joshua is hiding behind his happy and sad face, which, which we will need later on. And his mum, Jenny, is with him. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, Elaine's going to preach a sermon for us off the back of the reading that Graham will read to us. And Wendy is here just to keep us company and pray for us as we worship today together. So it's lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for joining our worship. Um, during the course of um, this morning, we're going to do a range of things. I'll ask you just to let your worship to God flow and pray that you will be blessed as we worship together. So I'm going to introduce um, some words as we start and just refine who's with us on the screen um, for a little bit of our service. So excuse me whilst I do some tech jiggery pokery in the background. Um, the joys of having to do two things at once. So let's let's start our service. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us go recognise God's presence with us now. So I invite you just to hold a moment's silence as you invite God to draw even closer to you this morning. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles, yet joined. And we're going to fulfil that act of worship by singing. So Lou's going to lead us in a song, 10,000 Reasons my heart to find bless the lord oh my soul so she's going to play it through once because it might be a newer track to some of you so you can just listen before we um begin Thank you. 
is the Lord on my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to see your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. There's the Lord of my song, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing. The end draws near and my heart has come But still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Thank you so much, Lou. There are so many different ways we worship on there. Some worship and um, rejoice through singing, some through dancing. Um, I, had the, I have the privilege of being able to see everyone's faces who's helping us lead the service um, whilst Lou was singing that. And I could just see Joshua bouncing around and worshiping. <laughs> so um, let's, uh, let's continue our worship. And I'm gonna pray for us as we continue with our service. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I wonder if there's anything that's happened in your week that you're slightly less happy about. Um, and so now we're going to have a short time of confession. So in the light of Jesus, let us each examine ourselves and confess our sins. So let's have a moment's silence and then I'll ask you to speak these words together with me. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. So empowered by the Spirit, I wonder, um, we're gonna, I'm going to invite Graham on screen now um, and he's going to lead us in our Bible reading. So good morning, Graham, and thank you so good much. Morning. Good morning, um, everybody. Green to read to us and... Um, I'll just disappear myself from the screen so you can read to us, Greg. Thank you. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, whilst the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Thank you, Graham. And Elaine's going to help us now um, think through what that reading might mean. And Elaine, I think there were a few bits and pieces of props that we needed to have handy. What were they again? Could you remind me? Um, yeah, if you have a crown, then please, if you would like to put it on your head, you might feel like the king. OK, if you have a happy and sad face, I've made one. I'm not very good at drawing and stuff, but here's my, my happy face and I turn it round. And here's my sad face. And Joshua's got his ready as well. Brilliant. So you might like to have those handy. And whenever you feel, I might give you a few prompts, but mostly when you feel you want to use it, then use it. Um, whatever you like. Oh, yes. Wendy's got her crown on. This is really good. So <laughs> I'll make everyone disappear now for a bit so you can concentrate. Really? Thank yeah. you. So as we begin, let's pray. Father, we thank you that Jesus told these amazing stories and we pray that we will learn something from this one today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who doesn't love a wedding? We all do, don't we? And last year we had a couple of weddings in St Anne's, Adrian and Valerie and Jay and Naomi. They were, they were married in St Anne's Church. We had great celebrations all round. It was wonderful. And also, two years ago this week, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were married in Windsor Castle. And as well as the expected guests, there were more than a thousand people from the general public who were invited to be part of the celebrations. I wonder if you were one of the lucky ones or did you know anyone who was? If you had been invited, would you have turned it down? I doubt it. And what you would what would you have worn? Would you have worn jeans and a T-shirt? No, I'm sure you wouldn't. You would have been delighted to attend and you would have worn your very best outfit, sharing the joy of a wedding celebration with as many people as possible. What a wonderful gesture from the royal family. So as you've heard, Today's gospel reading describes another royal wedding, not one, though, that everyone seems to have wanted to celebrate. So as we look at the story, let's see what we can learn for it from it for today. So first thing to say is I'm glad this didn't really happen because parts of it are really grim, aren't they? This is a parable. This is a story with a message. And it's not either a prediction of what was going to happen. Matthew uh, wrote his gospel after the destruction of Jerusalem. This is just a story, like a fairy story. But it tells us some important things. So first of all, we meet the king. So if you want to put your crown on or keep your crown on, if you've got one, wonderful. I'm afraid my crown is just my hands. 
This is the prince's wedding, a great royal occasion, a glorious chance to have a huge celebration. And this king is very generous. He provides a sumptuous meal for a large number of guests. So he's a happy, happy king and happy people. And now I've lost my place. This is not good. <laughs> so for him, part of the joy of putting on this celebration was seeing everybody enjoying themselves. The king, no doubt, owned a large amount of land, was very rich. He employed managers to take care of the land and he would trust them to do a good job. And they obviously did. And he'd want to show his appreciation to them for all their hard work by inviting them to the wedding banquet. And because he was king, he would expect them to accept that invitation. It was actually not so much a gentle invitation, but more of an obligation. You will come. If the king invites you, you will attend. The bad news is that the invited guests are not happy. They refuse. They show they have little respect or sense of allegiance to the king. Their business concerns, their pursuit of wealth and success are much more important to them. Can you imagine their grumpy faces? They will certainly not be full of joy and celebration. And even when they get a second request to attend, they get even grumpier. They turn to violence and murder. Sad face. But there's better news coming up. Better news. More invitations this time, less fortunate. Add some good. They're the poor in society, those who don't have any business to attend to, and they gratefully accept the surprise invitation and turn up in great numbers to fill the banqueting hall and benefit from the king's generosity. In those days, when a big banquet was held, the host would supply wedding clothes for all the guests and I imagine that's must have what must have been what happened here most of the guests couldn't have a, possibly afforded to possess wedding clothes but there's one man who slipped through the net he's not wearing wedding clothes why was he just lazy was he a rebel who wanted to insult the king by refusing the new clothes we don't know, but he's in big trouble. The king notices him and he has him hiked out of the celebration most unceremoniously with dire consequences, more sad faces. So in this parable, the servants represent the Old Testament prophets who are urging the Jews to return to their status and calling as God's chosen people. God's people were the first to be invited, but they've refused that invitation and now it's extended to the poor and the marginalized, the sinners, the Gentiles. So what does it mean for us? Being part of God's kingdom should be a great and joyful place to be. When we're living our best, accepting his invitation to join his banquet, when our priorities are his, when Jesus is Lord of every part of our lives, we live life to the full. And this is nothing to do with how rich or poor we are, but so often our pursuit of financial gain and accumulation of possessions seems to be more important than our spiritual life. So basically, we have to ask ourselves what our priorities are. Barbara reminded us last week that everything we come, we have comes from God. When we prioritize giving back to God what he has already given to us, it expresses thankfulness for all we've received. The important question isn't 
how much do I give? But does my gift truly reflect who I am and what I have received from God? It's hard to acknowledge Jesus as Lord when worldly possessions are central in our lives. We express our gratitude and love by giving back to God what he has entrusted us with in both practical service and in giving money. Obviously, every church needs money to be able to flourish and serve God adequately. And as well as giving our time and our talents in the activities of the church, we do need to assess how much money we can give. Money is a gift from God in the first place. But we can only give what we can afford. God doesn't expect any more of us than that. In these very difficult times of economic hardship, of furlough and redundancy, some of us are really struggling to make ends meet. God understands that. Part of our obligation to him is to provide for ourselves and our families to use what little we have wisely. So the heart of this parable is the gracious and beautiful picture of a surprising invitation to those who never dreamed they might be invited. We are invited to joy. We can't settle for less by taking it for granted. And such a gracious invitation requires the best that we have and the best that we are. And we're going to recognize that in a few moments after we later in the service, after our prayers, when we sing the hymn, take my life and let it be consecrated to thee, Lord. So let's make that our prayer today, that we can be full of the joy of God's kingdom and adequately present our whole lives to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elaine. That's a lovely way of unpicking the generosity of God and um, looking how we might be generous in response or how we might be generous by caring for those we most passionately need to care for so thank you that's beautiful i wonder if i might invite everybody who's at home to join us at this point um, we're going to say together the affirmation of faith um, so i'll put that up on screen if you'd like to join me in saying that that would be amazing though he was divine he did not cling to equality with god but made himself nothing taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death of the cross. Therefore, God raised him on high and has given him the name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So now we're going to um, continue with prayers and uh, Joshua and Jenny are going to come. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us so that we can stay connected. Sharing the word of God together in this way helps us to know that even though we're in lockdown, God is still in control. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we lift up your name. We are so thankful for your grace and for your mercy. We pray for the Queen and all the politicians that you will guide them to make good decisions. We pray that you will keep the children safe as the schools reopen. We also pray that the churches will be reopened in order that we can gather again and pray as an essential part of life. Lord, we want to pray for those who are on the front line and for those who are risking their lives, caring for those who are sick and less fortunate. I pray you will cover them 
bless them and keep them safe in your precious name, the almighty Jesus Christ. We pray for our families across the world and here at home. We pray for our church family and ask you to give comfort for those who have lost loved ones. I pray a special prayer for our treasurer and her family at this time. We pray for the world that with faith, we are guaranteed your victory through this crisis. As we've just heard in the reading from Matthew, by accepting Jesus' invitation, loving him with all our hearts and loving each others like ourselves, we will be saved. We pray for wisdom to not be afraid to accept God's invitation and have faith to put everything in his hands because he's in control. We thank God for giving us the power and strength to support our community and church family. Let everybody be blessed in your name. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, ye will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. <laughs> Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying for the community and for all of us, um, Jenny and Joshua. That's lovely. Thank you very much. So um, I wonder if um, you have had an opportunity to in engage with church life through our morning prayers as well as these um, mornings of Sunday worship. Um, obviously, we're going to carry on with that existing pattern of, of morning prayer uh, and Sunday worship. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday, we have nine o'clock morning prayer live streamed like this is on Facebook. And on Thursday, if you're really keen and you're up at 7.20, then ask me and I'll send you the Zoom details. We have a slightly more informal gathering of prayer and then we'll be um, online again at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Um, Thank you also to those of you who might have prayed for our PCC. We um, met this Wednesday and um, it's quite some time until we'll be allowed um, to gather back in church buildings. But our PCC was starting to pray and think about what that might look like in the future. So do please continue to hold them in your prayers. And um, as they discern and look for ways in which we might balance what we've learned about worshipping online, together with how we um, worship safely when we're allowed back into the buildings. So please do keep holding them in your prayers. One of the things that came up through our meeting was ideas about fundraising. So if anyone has an amazing idea about how we can fundraise, does anybody want to be sponsored to do something really wild and wacky? Um, then please do let any one of the ministry team um, know. We'd love to use some of those ideas. Um, to bring some funds to the church as well, because we're missing out on things like our legendary plant sale, which is um, known throughout the world. Uh, no, it's not quite as widely known as the as the wedding in our kingdom um, parable, but um, yeah, close to that. And I've got an invitation for you because we're going for the theme of invitations. I have one for all of you. So does anyone fancy going camping with me this summer? but without leaving your home. So I'm gonna pitch a tent in my back garden and I'm going to go camping. Um, Wendy's gonna join us as well, I hope. Um, Wendy, you're planning on camping with me, do you think? Yes, indeed, I am. Yes, I'm Excellent. Cool. So, so um, Wendy and I often go to something called New Wine and I'd like to share with you a little clip about um, the summer New Wine camp this year. Because if you'd like to join it from your home, 
and you're delighted by the idea is of having better showers rather than um, little cubicles in the middle of a field, I am personally, um, then uh, we'd love for you to join us. So let me work out how to share this video with you on screen very briefly. These are strange and terrible days. Lives are being lost, livelihoods are threatened, structures are being shaken, the world's in the grip of fear, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be over anytime soon. But what if something else is going on? God didn't send this, but what if God is using it? History tells us that whenever plague or persecution or famine has come upon the earth, the church shines. What if instead of being shaken, we're being shaped? What if we, the church, don't emerge from lockdown timidly and weary, but we break out, prayed up and fired up with a message of hope and healing that we've experienced for ourselves and that we're equipped and ready to share with a nation that's hurting? What if Satan thought that he was bringing the church to our knees and just discovers that we've become more powerful than ever before? This is our time. Let's not miss it. So I wonder what you think, Wendy, about this idea of going along and camping together and joining in with this conference from our back gardens. How do you think it'll work? Well, I, what I think is that um, we'll be able to sleep out overnight under the stars, as it were, and then um, we'll have to come indoors during the day <laughs> because unless you've got live streaming capabilities outside, if you can take your computer outside, that would work. But I think what we get to do is we get to join in the um, the series of talks that's at New Wine, and uh, there'll be a massive choice, I'm sure, of people um, probably all live streaming from one place or another. Um, and then we'll be able to join in uh, worship celebrations. And the worship at New Wine, they uh, they use a lot of the modern songs and, uh, as well as some of the old classics. And we'll be able to join in with that and hear people um, preach uh, through the evening. So it looks like a really good uh, week of teaching, of worship, of drawing closer to God. So uh, I hope people will join us. It'd be great. So if you're interested in that, email either myself or Wendy and we'll send you more details as it come out. But in the meantime, just hold in your diary the 30th of July to the 3rd of August, if you'd like to um, join with us in that. In fact, um, Joshua has even got a great thing. Look, you're all invited to join us on the camping trip. So um, thank you, Joshua, for making the invite. That's brilliant and very beautiful. So uh, now Lou's going to um, lead us in our final act of sung worship. And we're going to sing the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. So there is something about our lives as Elaine says that when we hand them over to God, um, our lives become something more beautiful. So I hope you'll enjoy worshipping as Lou sings um, and please do sing from your own homes. Take my silver 
Thank you, Lou. It's beautiful. So I wonder as we hand over all we are to God and become more beautifully his, and as we um, ponder what that might look like when we're eventually allowed back into the buildings. Um, I have one more notice that um, slipped my mind, but maybe that was right and a good timing. Um, we'd love to invite those people who um, haven't considered it before or maybe those of you who've been doing it for a long time to continue to do so. We're updating the list of people who might want to serve the chalice when we're allowed to do that. And I know that act of communion has been something that's very important for many of us and we're all deeply missing um, at the moment. So if that's something important to you and you'd like to be able to share the chalice with people or um, be a prayer as part of our church, do the intercession sometimes as um, Joshua and Jenny did for us this morning, um, then please do be in touch with one of the ministry team. We'd love to expand that list um, slowly as we return to worshipping in church or indeed um, obviously for intercessions whilst we're online. So please do consider emailing any one of the ministry team. We'd love to hear back from you or speak to a member of the PCC. That'd be great. And now I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing and then you're all invited to um, grab a cup of coffee if you haven't already got one. And um, we'll have a chatter with those who are around and um, those who are on screen um, and we'll have a bit of time together is socially. But let's pray. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord, now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. And if you, as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing and honour and glory be yours here and everywhere, now and forever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you. And for all those for whom we have prayed, be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I'm going to invite everybody to join us and um, we're going to have a bit of a chat. So was there anyone who fancied the idea of joining Wendy and I um, camping it from their back garden? Not personally, oh. no. <laughs> I don't know. What about the... Grandchildren, Mike, you can join the, you can join the online um, talks, Elaine, without having to camp. That's that's the glory oh, of joining New Wine electronically. <laughs> having be, having been at New Wine uh, from nineteen ninety eight or nine until two thousand and five, at least, <laughs> um, yes, New Wine's great. I uh, would recommend it wholeheartedly. Brilliant. Okay. And so we you had... can camp indoors, can you? 
You can camp yeah. indoors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, definitely. Why not? <laughs> Why not? And um, I've had a few messages from people whilst we've been worshipping, so I'll just put some of those up on screen. Um, so a few messages from various people. And um, Jenny and Joshua, there's one for you, um, for your prayers. And it, Pat says, well done, Josh, for the prayers. And I think this might be from James as well as from Helen. And Rebecca says this. She doesn't have Jess and Ed today um, who are with their dad, but she's going to show them the service so they can join in from home. That's great. Thank you so much for being with us. Well done, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca. Enjoy so anyone... Go on, sorry. I was saying to Rebecca to enjoy the peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any exciting plans this week? Hope to be a grandma again sometime. <laughs> Soon. Oh, well done, Elaine. Um, Elaine. That, that sounds like, that sounds like a lovely lovely thing to be happening this week. You can't prescribe it, but what you can prescribe is um, Friday morning. Uh, we have a small life group, and Joy is asking, um, "Shall we get together again on Friday?" So I'm going to invite. I hope the rest of the little group don't mind um, that you join. If you fancy a cup of coffee, a cup of tea around about, I think it should be, we usually meet about 9.30, which is quite early. But so after morning prayer, we'll uh, we'll continue with a, with a social on Zoom. And uh, if you get in touch with me, phone or email, um, then I will send you a Zoom link and join Pat and Joy and Carol and me for some coffee. Um, you bring your own, sorry. <laughs> Lou, what, you, what are you and Nancy and Maz up to this week? Have you got anything exciting on? Well, it's actually Maz and our, Maz and my, we're, it's our third wedding anniversary. Oh, oh, congratulations. Which day? On Wednesday, 27th. So um, oh. we're going to have curry, I think. Oh, hey. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Brilliant. Take, take out curry or make it yourself curry. Uh, well, probably take out as a treat. Um, one of the things Elaine suggested um, for um, fundraising while we're while we're all online was a was a homemade cookbook. What do, what do people think about a homemade cookbook? I, I think that sounds fun. We yes, great idea. We've had lots of requests from Tom for particular family favorite I meal. So if anyone's got a family favorite meal that they always cook. Um, that they want to share. That sounds like a great idea. So um, Tom frequently phoned from university saying, how, Dad, how do you make your steak stew? And um, Dad, how do you make mac, mac and cheese? So yes, simple but joyful family recipes might be a great way to And you'll probably know this one, but have you guys come across Panakati? Oh, I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's corned beef and potatoes. Yeah. And just oh, yummy. Yeah. Oh, oh, very nice. Yes. Oh, oh, Lou, you're you're getting loads of congratulations messages wow. from everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Three years, think it. That's, I can't believe it's gone so quickly, hasn't it? Man. But then you think about the size of your of your little baby. And I know. Raise um, testimony. It must be three years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here, look, we've got a. Here you go. Hills would be happy to share a cake recipe. Oh, excellent. Oh, brilliant. Yes. yes. That's lovely. I'm, I'm already seeing the chapters coming together. We've got cakes, we've got um, family favourites, and I've been really enjoying something called the Green Roasting Tin. It's a, it's a, um, a recipe book. Do you know how you normally get recipe books and you, you use one or two recipes from every recipe book? I have used over 10 recipes, probably more like 20 recipes from this one book. And it's got all sorts of vegetarian and vegan stuff. And it's really tasty. I can't believe I'm saying this. It's, it's really good food. So I've got lots to share as well. So um, we have new new tryouts as well, a chapter on, on new stuff. Graham, what, what, what recipe have you got in mind when you hear all this wow. talk of food? What would you suggest? I was just thinking it's probably safest if I don't contribute, but I won't ask Val. <laughs> well, I'll well, you you by the way. Val Joshua, what would you have as your favourite meal if you had to bring something into a cookbook? Your favourite meal? 
Oh, that sounds like it's <laughs> sausages. Mum is the best <laughs> cook ever. Right. Pasta and corn and chicken wings. <laughs> what was that? Pasta, pasta, corn and chicken wings. Oh, yum. <laughs> Lovely idea. Joshua, what are you enjoying about having school at home and what would you like to get back to about school in school? What do you miss about school? His friends. His friends. His friends. Yeah. Friend. What do you enjoy about homeschooling? <laughs> Definitely I silence. Guess, I guess I stay at home and have food that I want. <laughs> he gets to stay at home and have food that he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, we've got some ideas of other food that people might want. Joy's suggesting Ooh, some soups, yeah. maybe Wendy. Yeah, I've got that I've written it down. So there seems to be some amazing inspiration. So thank you everyone for joining together to worship. Thank you to all of those people who've been on screen with me this morning and helping to share the leading of worship. If anyone else would like to join in with that idea of um, being part of the on-screen community, please do um, just be in touch with any one of us. We'd love to have you join us. It's a, it's a real privilege to have so many people join us online so thank you so much for coming i'm going to finish the broadcast um now and um if everybody who's on screen would like to wave their farewells as we say goodbye to everybody bye, bye, all. bye, bye. bye. thank you bye, bye.